Good morning, dear learners. I'm Dr. Satish Vishwambar Lakde, and I'm working as an assistant professor of communication skills in the Department of Humanities and Sciences, Walchin Institute of Technology, Sholapur. And I welcome you all for this session on pronouns part three. As I discussed earlier, I had divided this session on pronouns into part one, part two, and part three. So this is the concluding session, learning outcome. At the end of this session, students will be able to use indefinite, distributive, relative, and interrogative pronouns in their communication. Now here's a question for you to think over. Identify the type of pronoun highlighted in green used in the following sentence. And the sentence is, this is my pen. I would request you to pause this video for some time Open your course journal and write the answer for this question in your course journal. And then you can resume this video. Welcome back. And this is the answer for the question. And the answer is demonstrative pronoun. So this is a demonstrative pronoun in this particular sentence. Next slide. Now let us move to the next category that is indefinite pronouns read the following sentences sentence number one one hardly knows what to do sentence number two one should take care of one's health three one must not praise oneself four none of the pens are mine five all were killed and the last sentence some are born great. The above pronouns highlighted in green color refer to persons or things in a general way but do not refer to any person or thing in particular. Therefore, they are called as indefinite pronouns. Very simple definition to understand. Now, the next slide. Distributive pronouns. Read the following sentences. Sentence number one, each of the boys gets a pen. Sentence number two, either of these roads lead to the bus stand. Sentence number three, neither of the pens is mine. Each, either, neither are called distributive pronouns because they refer to persons or things one at a time. For this reason, they are always singular and are followed by the verb in singular. The next category, relative pronouns. Read the following pairs of sentences. Sentence number one, I met Rohan. Rohan had just returned from school. Sentence number two, Raj has found the pen. Raj had lost the pen. And sentence number three, here is the notebook. You lent me the notebook. Now, let us combine the above pairs into one sentence. So, sentence number one. I met Rohan, who had just returned from school. Sentence number two. Raj has found the pen, which he had lost. Sentence number three. Here is the notebook that you lent me. Let us examine the work done by each of the words who, which, and that in the above sentences. The word who is used instead of the noun Rohan, therefore it does the work of a pronoun. The word who joins or connects two statements, therefore it does the work of a conjunction, therefore we might call it a conjunctive pronoun. Who is called a relative pronoun because it refers or relates, that is, carries us back to some noun going before, here the noun Rohan, which is called its antecedent. Now let us see the forms of the relative pronouns. A relative pronoun who has different forms for accusative and genitive. As you can see in the following table, who 
belongs to nominative case whose belongs to genitive case and whom belongs to accusative case who whose whom all these relative pronouns are used in the singular as well as in the plural form as is seen in the following sentences this is the man or woman who works hard this is the man or woman whose exercise is done well this is the man or woman whom all praise these are the men or women who work hard these are the men or women whose exercises are done well these are the men or women whom all praise so as i said in these sentences who whose and whom are used as singular as well as plural relative pronouns forms of relative pronouns continued relative pronoun which has the same form for the nominative and accusative cases this is the bungalow which belongs to my uncle this is the bungalow which my uncle built relative pronoun which has no genitive case but whose is sometimes used as a substitute for of which as in the following sentence a triangle whose three sides are equal is called an equilateral triangle forms of the relative pronouns a relative pronoun that has the same form in the singular and plural and in the nominative and accusative it has no genitive case now this is seen in the following sentences he that is content is happy they that touch pitch will be defiled take any pencil that you like a relative pronoun what is used only in the singular and has the same form in the nominative and accusative cases as is seen in the following sentences what has happened is not good i say what i mean he failed in what he attempted use of the relative pronouns continued now let us see the use of the relative pronouns number 1 as a general rule who is used for persons singular or plural only as is seen in the following sentences i met the man who gave me a book i met the men who gave me a book whose is used in speaking of persons but sometimes of things without life this is the girl whose pen is lost this is the fan whose blade is broken number 3 which is used for things without life and for animals it may refer to a singular or plural noun the book which you gave me is lost the horse which i saw yesterday was black in color the use of the relative pronouns continued so number 4 that is used for persons and things it may refer to a singular or a plural noun as is seen in the following sentences this is the man that i told you of i have lost the pen that you gave me happy is the man that findeth wisdom now the next category interrogative pronouns read the following sentences who is there who are you of whom do you speak whom do you want whose is this pen which is the house which do you prefer tea or coffee what is the matter what do you want what will all the students say the pronouns in green color are similar in form to relative pronouns but the work which they do is different the above pronouns are used for asking questions therefore they are called as interrogative pronouns so this is the reference for this particular work and i wish you all a very happy learning session thank you so much